Hello and welcome to my video series on uh, illustration in Procreate and uh, rich media comics creation in the comic machine. Um, today in this video we're going to look at uh, how we created this uh, cover art for uh, this fan fiction uh, comic based, a uh, digital comic based on Star Wars and Predator. Um, we're going to use um, uh, Procreate on an iPad Pro 12.9 inch to create the art. Uh, we'll probably have to import it into Photoshop to create the, um, the text uh, because uh, Procreate uh, will not yet anyways handle uh, text. Um, and then uh, we will animate it uh, in um, or motion edit it in uh, the comic machine. So I'm going to close this comic bound. Again, this is at thecomicmachine.com. Um, right now it's in beta, so you have to register for an account. So as you can see, the uh, the two opponents come in to each other as well as uh, the text comes in. We'll see that once again. then the uh, credits come up at the bottom there. So here we are in Procreate and I'm going to open up that page. Um, as always I'm going to go through the uh, layer setup. Um, of course the, the heads will be on one layer and then the type will be on another. Um, I'll just open up this. There's a rough uh, blue line on the, the top there, outside of the folder. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna move this over so I can see it. Uh, I'm gonna turn off the, all the layers and go up one by one. Um, the base uh, layer is a pretty solid layer, and that uh, provides a um, uh, uh, because this will be a, a transparent PNG layer uh, when it comes time to do the comic, um, so which means that the uh, the background will be, will be transparent when I, when we export it. So if I turn off the uh, background color, you can see the uh, default uh, grid pattern underneath. So we need a pretty solid base uh, to block out uh, all the transparency in the uh, in the middle part of the uh, the figure there. Uh, especially in the middle part, uh, because we um, every bit of translucency or transparency in a PNG 24 adds a lot of data to the file, so you don't want to make the file too too big. And also, if, if it's if this layer is moving underneath something, like say underneath uh, the type there, you don't want the text to be peeking through the um, the, um, the 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 figure or the head, because it'll you know it'll ruin the uh, illusion of. Uh, you know of it being solid um, and then there's the uh, shading layer I just called it gray and then the darker layer I mean you don't have to use as many layers I, I, I like to just so that I can have the option of editing it um, I put an overlay uh, this is called uh, overlay color layer just to add some um, bluish tone to certain areas like uh, underneath here and then a um, what they call the add or linear dodge add in Photoshop is what it's called to uh, to the uh, highlighted area to add some uh, glow to the uh, or a yellowish glow to it and there's a multiplying layer which is um, adds these dots here um, this is a delineated by the M there just to add uh, some of the spots from the um, from the creature's head so you know obviously you have to, to get good reference for something that exists like this or otherwise you have to work out the uh, the character if it's an original character um, so this um, was placed into a folder so I can turn off both heads you know separately and then the text um, I created in Photoshop um, and then imported then I added some uh, texturing to the uh, some uh, weathering um, 
and I played around with it uh, to, to I played around with the black uh, background didn't work as well because it uh, sort of drowned out the detail around the edges there I played around with having a line two lines looks too um, looks like a an election ad so I decided against that um, and then black with white or black with uh, you know a drop shadow seemed to work the best just having the uh, black on white and what happens is the um, I will f when it comes down to exporting uh, I will f flatten the folder and then export one piece of the head at once uh, to a PNG layer I'll, I'll show you when that, that time comes so here we have a, a time-lapse export of the uh, the whole uh, drawings uh, process that was captured in Procreate uh, this is a neat feature that, that allows me to, to show you these videos without uh, you know uh, constantly recording it with a camera um, so you can see here uh, I'm gonna pause it here is I, I drew it smaller than uh, what the final one is just playing around uh, getting the figure uh, uh, accurate um, a lot of times when you have a close cropping of especially like figures heads hands and stuff like that you want to draw the whole uh, anatomical figure just so that you know the proportions are correct and uh, the beauty of drawing it digitally is that you can actually size it up uh, to the way you like it uh, in the final as you can see there I adjusted the angle of the heads very easily as well I'm just roughing in uh, the elements right now as you can see I expanded out even further pulled them apart played around with uh, the type roughly So at this stage, you're, you're just trying to get uh, a lot of the gestural, the feel of it. Um, yeah. So at this at this stage, I mean, if you're uh, if you're going to be doing the fine art yourself, you, you I suppose you can bring the uh, rough art to a level that you're comfortable with. Uh, so especially if you're working digitally, it's very forgiving. In fact, that um, that you can erase out things completely without without actually worrying about. How many times you have to do it because if you do it on you know bristol board or whatever the you know there's only so many times you can edit something other before the paper disintegrates um but uh yeah so i mean as long as uh, you got the figure the the basic figure right and the feel of it is is right and the basic details that you can you can depending on how comfortable you are you can sort of wing it it'll save you some time it also give you some more a fresher you know less tight look to it here I'm using uh, that um, I think I explained in another video is the, the uh, uh, using these chiseled flat uh, sketching brushes that depending on the azimuth of the uh, or the angle orientation of the of the uh, pen it will give you a thick and thin line And here, uh, um, a lot of the uh, you know overlapping lines, like you see, I erased out because it was too, it wasn't uh, correct there. The line that was uh, there before. And that's what I'm talking about. It's very forgiving drawing digitally. So obviously, I'm on a on a layer above the background. In fact, as a default, Procreate opens up to a, a floating layer. Procreate really is quite a uh, robust drawing platform, even more so than Photoshop, I think, uh, just because it's actually specifically made for uh, illustration rather than like photo editing or whatever you know, or whatever else you you know you would use Photoshop for. So here I am uh, laying in. Um, the shading on a on a on a, another layer of, uh, above the base layer um, 
so as far as the shading um, some people might use a multiply layer so that it was already dark I, I tend to, to not do that just because it adds it, it grays down the drawing um, and in a lot of cases and also the the shaded area of a color is not just a darker version of the color in a lot of ca cases uh, well to make it look uh, uh, um, nicer uh, uh, fresher it, it's, it's actually a um, an ana analogous color in a way so it's not just a darker color of this beige here but a, a shift towards the red spectrum um, and that the combination of the two makes it more interesting color wise add in the base colors there and um, Yeah, so right here is like a core, sh core shadow between the, the light and dark. Um, uh, you can put that in the same layer as the shading layer, or, or I actually just open up another layer. I think it comes from working in advertising where there's like multiple changes and um, I always have it on a layer just in case there's uh, changes and that makes it a, an easy revision. I'm, pl I'm putting in some highlights here um, so this is the two to not have to open up a separate layer for the highlight I just go back to the base layer to put some of the shading uh, for some of the highlight here I'm working on the stormtrooper so the base uh, color is, is kind of a gray tone so it allows me to actually go towards the highlights and the and the shading so that's kind of a mid-tone um, so you can see that's the uh, uh, sort of a yellowish tinge using a um, an add layer which is uh, I think in Photoshop goes a light um, linear dodge add I believe or so uh, so it adds kind of a, a yellowish tinge and, and lightens it um, to give that sort of a color cast um, yeah, here I'm playing around with the, uh, the background and some spit, obviously. <laughs> so the uh, the rest of this video is just uh, the time lapse here is just me playing around with uh, you know the line and different colors, different backgrounds and stuff like that. We won't watch. So we're back to the actual um, Procreate uh, file now. Um, so as I mentioned in the beginning, it's uh, split up into uh, parts of uh, the uh, folders, head, the head, um, the uh, type, and then the uh, background, which is basically just a white background. Um, what we need for the animation uh, is, uh, as far as the separate layers are concerned, we need a layer uh, for the background, which is a basically white background. Uh, in the comic machine, the uh, default background is is, is, is black, uh, so we need to actually create a uh, square um, back or a white background. And the um, I think the canvas size is 1024 by 768, so that's the minimum. And it's basically white, so you do bare minimum. Um, the uh, the second layer would be the uh, the the text because that's overlapped by the head, so the text, but not only that, the text will be split up into two parts, uh, because as you remember, um, I'll just refresh your memory here, the, um, the text uh, trooper comes in from both sides, so they have to be split up. Uh, so there's one for the trooper, one for predator, and then the two separate heads. So the the uh, stormtrooper head and then the uh, predator head. Um, so I drew the heads all on one file folder. Uh, so if I just flatten that, that will be uh, it will be one um, it'll be one layer of both heads. Um, and then I would just copy uh, and cut each one out and paste it again to create uh, two separate heads. Um, 
but there's uh, if you if you want to just keep the layer format uh, layer uh, structure it is just in case there's revisions uh, you can there's even an easier way of, of doing it um, that involves uh, doing a copy or a copy all instead of um, when you're uh, selecting it um, so what do I want to do um, I'll just demonstrate how to do the heads because it would be the same way to do the type I'm going to turn off the uh, type folder and then I'll you know, obviously turn off the rough layer and then the um, this red thing here I'm just going to delete it because I don't need it I was just playing around and then there's a black layer which I do not need um, so um, right now the head folder is split up into a whole bunch of, uh, of layers that create that uh, illustration. Um, I'm going to select that and then um, um, go to the selection tool. Um, what I'm trying to do is separate the Stormtrooper from the uh, Predator. So I'm going to do a selection around there. So I'm going to particularly careful to overlap the uh, edge because you don't want to miss some of the, the edge and see I've sort of missed there right here so I might have uh, missed some of the detail here what all you have to do is hit the uh, um, add, oh sorry this is covering it here hit the add uh, button here and what that does is you can add more to the selection and then when you finish you hit the add button again that just adds more uh, selection to it you can see the cross hatching lines here those are the areas that are not selected so um now i there is a, a copy and copy all and, and the easiest way is using a three finger swipe if you if you swipe down on the ipad with three fingers you bring up this um uh, i'm sure you can change it if you want but there's copy and copy all. Um, what you do with copies, you just copy what the layer is. Copy all is actually you copy everything um, right down to the uh, whatever is visible. You copy it all in one, uh, all in one uh, one uh, layer basically. So I'll demonstrate that. Um, and 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 what what I have to do is actually I'll, I'll show you uh, some of the things you want to do to create that PNG transparent layer because uh, you want a transparent layer with no background now if I don't turn off the background if I just copy all and then I hit paste right away you can see that uh, from the surface it looks like oh okay I've created a stone trooper head but if I turn off the background you can see that it actually copied the background as well so you don't want that so what you have to do is you turn on the head layer and you turn off the background layer and then do the selection And you do copy all and then paste now if I turn off the head head folder and the background layer, you can see that the uh, this guy is totally on its own and I'll turn off that copy layer and turn back the folder of the heads again and I will do the uh, predator guy three finger swipe down copy all and I'll paste right away as you can see that yeah now you have two separate heads I'm going to turn on the background that's the third layer so what you have to do is um, if I want to export the, the um, stormtrooper head so I know I got the head um, totally on its own uh, as you can see there's that grid pattern uh, behind here the gray grid pattern that, that just means that there's nothing there it's, it's transparent actually so this guy is floating on its on its own um, so now you can go ahead and export it um, so you go to the actions here and go to share and what you want to export it is, is a PNG and uh, you can do it however I'm going to export it to my Mac but you can use um, the files uh, save to files which is on the iCloud or save image save it to your um, save it to your uh, camera roll uh, but I'm just going to use uh, click on Mac Pro Okay, so that's a transparent PNG. What a, and then you would just go and uh, turn on the uh, Predator guy and do the exact same thing, PNG. Now you wouldn't want to um, uh, export it as a JPEG because JPEGs aren't transparent. So you'll have if you do that, 
I believe there will be a white background there and it wouldn't be a, a floating layer. Um, so, and, and so you would do the same with the, um, the text. Uh, you would select, um, you know, this side and copy and paste it, copy all. Actually, you don't have to copy all because this is just one layer. You would just copy that one layer. So you can do copy or copy all. So one more thing I have to do before I uh, uh, go to the comic machine uh, motion editor is I want to uh, resize the uh, can uh, canvas of the um, the entire uh, file actually um, because I did it in a higher retina display which is 2048 by 1536 pixels uh, but the canvas of the comic machine is 1024 by 768 um, now if I was going to zoom in on detail in the comic machine um, then I, I would keep it at a higher res just so that it doesn't lose resolution when you zoom in on something but um, I don't I'm not you know th this is um, it's going to be size as and a lot of things are going to be uh, because this is a bunch of layers is going to be uh, they have to be lining up to each other I mean you can you can totally do it as 2040 as a higher res and then have to size th each individual item down individually but it's easier if it, it just fits the canvas perfectly and you don't have to resize anything everything's proportionate um, so having said that um, procreate has a new feature in the last upgrade that allows you to crop and resize before you used to have to export it to uh, Photoshop so it's right here under the actions this is a really handy feature and it's a long time coming um, so if I want to uh, change the resolution of the entire canvas proportionately, um, I want to click on this button here, which is a proportionate uh, toggle. Once I click that, if I uh, if I alter the uh, resolution on, on the width, it would affect the height automatically and proportionately. And I want to hit the resample button because I want to resample the entire thing. I don't want to crop an image. I mean, I'll show you the difference. Um, if I click the proportionate uh, button right here, uh, of course, both the width and the height is, is highlighted. So if I change one, it affects the other. Now, if I don't click the resample and I click the, uh, the, uh, the 1024 and 78, it'll, what it is, it'll just crop out a section of that canvas. And I don't want to do that. So I'm going to reset it. And I'm going to click the resample button and then do the same 1024. So it actually, as you can see, it affects the entire canvas. You can see the uh, crop uh, guidelines are over the entire canvas. So I'm going to hit done. And just to check to see if it's the right resolution, if I'm going to go under canvas information and in the actions, as you can see, it's 1024 by 768. Now, if I just do uh, undo, I'll click the undo, and I go click on the canvas information again, you see it's back to 2048 by 1536. So that is how you resize the canvas. So now comes the final part of the, uh, the Rich Media comic is where we're going to do motion editing uh, in uh, the comic machine, which is um, an online app. Uh, it's in beta and it's uh, by uh, you have to pre register for it. Uh, it's in you know testing mode right now, but it's a, it's a lot of fun. Um, so I've opened up a page here. Um, I've actually edited it already, but I'm just going to open up a blank page to show you how it's done. Um, first of all, so I, I you know, I, I have to add in that white uh, background because even though it looks white here, uh, if I do a preview of this page only, you can see that it's black actually. So um, that's the default background. Um, so I'm going to add image, and um, I've already created a very easily white background and I've imported it so this is already a thousand twenty four by seven sixty eight as you can see by the width uh, I don't have to do anything else duration is zero delay is zero uh, start in transition nothing so it's once you go to that page you can preview it's white automatically um, so if you remember the animation the uh, 
as far as the um, uh, this is like a layer based uh, um, motion editor um, the text is on the, the the layer right above the white layer and then the, the heads kind of overlap the um, the uh, text so we're just gonna do that for now um, and then I'll show you how to actually change the timing I'm gonna start with the uh, stormtrooper head uh, and of course I because I saved to 1024 by 768 which is the the um, canvas size it goes in perfectly um, I'm just gonna put in the layers uh, and then worry about the timing later um, oh sorry I, I um, Oh, okay, well this is a good way of showing you how to actually, I'm supposed to put in the text first, so what I've got is the white layer here and then the uh, trooper. Uh, so uh, I want to insert a text layer between one and two, so I, I select one, have it open, and then add image of the uh, text, which is the trooper's one. And I will add the, uh, which if you go back to the layer stack, you can see that it's inserted in between the trooper and the um, white background. I'll click on the uh, trooper uh, text layer again and add the image of the other side of the uh, of the um, of the uh, the uh, heading. Um, so as you can see, the text, the two text layers, and then the uh, trooper head. And I will now add the um, predator guy. Where is it? Where is it? Right here. Okay, so they're all, as you can see, in uh, totally uh, fitting in line with each other. They're perfectly fitting. Um, so if I, I, I just all of the layers have zero duration and delay. So if I preview the page, you know, nothing happens. It's a static page. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, take a look at the text first, the trooper text. When I click on it, it just displays that. So you can see down here the transition is a start and delay. I want it to actually come in from the left side out of frame and then stop at the uh, uh, at this position. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, click on the start position and then just drag it to the left. As you can see. I want to drag it. I'll drag it to the best of my calculation to so it's right out of the frame. But um, as you can see, the Y position, I, I think I moved it up or down a bit. Uh, so I can quite move it uh, perfectly horizontal. So what I'm just doing is just press, uh, uh, type in zero for the position, the Y position, which is the up and down uh, position of the. Uh, of the object so if you can like toggle between the start and end you can see it coming in and out uh, so as far as timing I'm gonna make everything move at uh, 0.5 seconds which is a you know fairly uh, uh, good speed for for uh, this size um, and it'll come in from the left so I'm gonna preview it just to see how it, oh and also I'm gonna make it ease in and out uh, I always like that So you can see what happened is um, what happens is uh, that everything happens in sequence on in the comic machine. So this, it, it, because uh, num layer number one is zero duration zero delay, it will just happen automatically, and then it'll go on to the next one, which is the uh, trooper text, and that will take 0.5 seconds to to happen, and then there's no delay, so it'll happen right away, and then. And then these uh, three layers happen immediately because there's zero delay and zero duration for them. I'm going to go to the predator text and I'll do the same 0.5 duration. I will drag it to the right just out of frame. I'll make sure it's at the right uh, Y position. Ease in and out. All right. And just double check here. And I will take a look at that. So same thing happened, comes in from the left, comes in from the right, and then these appear immediately because there's no duration or, or, uh, or delay. I'll go next to the trooper, same thing. So if I accidentally selected the end position and then moved it, 
and then I realized, oh, I should I wanted to start. All you have to do is, um, you see this as copy start, copy start. I'll copy the start position again, and that always reset it to whatever the start is, uh, which is a handy feature if you make a mistake. Um, so I want to alter the start. Again, I'm just going to move it to the left out of frame, make sure the Y position is right, do ease in and out, and make it a duration of five. Now it's important to put a duration in, otherwise it will just, you know, it will just like appear instantly. And I'll show you what happens here. All right, I can see the predator. I didn't do the uh, duration and uh, movement yet, so I will do that quickly. Make sure the Y position is zero point five duration. Is in and out. Okay, so looking at it now, it's moving a bit too sluggishly. I want the two th two elements, the um, the text. Uh, the trooper versus uh, to come in at the same time as um, the uh, predator text. Now, as you can see, like um, you can not only put a delay on it, you can put a negative delay, which means. Um, so, if I just go back to the stack again, um, the trooper takes 0.5 seconds with no delay, and then uh, it, it does this, and then goes to the next one, which takes 0.5 uh, seconds. Now, if I put a negative delay of 0.5 seconds, because um, because this takes 0.5 seconds and this is a negative delay, this will will actually start at exactly at the same time. So layer three and two will happen at the same time. If this took one second to do to do, and you want this to coincide with this one, then you would do a negative delay of, of one second. Now let's test it out. Oops, I did something wrong here. Oh, sorry, I didn't put a negative delay here. I think there's a glitch in the. Um, there you go. So they both happen at the same time. I'm going to do the same with the uh, Stormtrooper and the um, the uh, Predator. I'll make the Predator happen at the same time as the uh, Stormtrooper. So I'll put a negative delay of 0.5. Right. So you can see that's uh, a bit snappier. And. Um, I think there's a credit that comes in to show, to show that it's um, no this credit uh, I did in um, in Photoshop so it's actually a bitmap image not text the text meaning that it's uh, text that's generated by the comic machine all right fiction again this is uh, saved out at 1024 by 768 so it fits in perfectly and what I want to do is, is to have it uh, sort of uh, appear coming in, uh, 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 like uh, descend uh, uh, from uh, an opacity of zero to appear. So it's sort of like a, um, a fade in, moving fade in. Um, so I want to alter the start. I just want to raise it a bit, just very slightly, maybe about 15. Sorry, it's negative 15 uh, pixels. I'll keep the position at zero as it was before, so you can see that it descends. And then I want to start at an opacity of uh, zero, so it sort of fades in as it, it's coming down. And I'll also do make it a uh, 0.5 duration. Now let's see how that looks. Yeah. Uh, maybe I want this to appear maybe after you get the full um, visual you can sort of see the visual of this first before this comes in because this is kind of like a uh, additional text so I'm gonna put a delay of point I don't know three seconds great so this was a fairly, um, I think, pretty basic, or, I mean, pretty easy to understand as far as the animation goes. Every, all these layers happen uh, one after another. Uh, so each of these layers, uh, if I set a duration of 0.5 happens, and then the next thing happens, and the next thing happens. The only thing that's kind of tricky is, is that I combine the occurrence of a layer with one before by having a negative delay. So uh, in effect, 
uh, two and three it takes 0.5 seconds to happen and then th four and five takes 0.5 so from f layer two to five it takes uh, one second so 0.5 for two and three point five and which equals one um, so what I'm going to show you next is something that is a little bit a little bit trickier I want to actually because I, I, I want these two heads to come in first and then the um, trooper versus predator to, to show up I don't want to give away the title uh, just want to show these the, the faces first um, but that's tricky because um, the trooper versus predator is underneath the heads the text is underneath the head so the text has to be uh, happen first but with uh, with a little trick uh, in the delay I can actually alter that um, so in the uh, trooper versus the, uh, in the uh, first text that comes in, um, if you think about it, these two together will come in first, which takes 0.5 seconds, and then um, I want the trooper versus predator to come in. Um, so if I put a delay of 0.5 seconds to allow for that to happen, it'll it'll take some time for before the text comes out. Now, um, the problem is, uh, with the comic machine, everything happens in sequence, unless you have a negative delay. So if this is, has a, 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 a delay of zero, then it will still happen after, even if you put a delay, all it does is move everything up. Uh, unless I put a negative delay on the, when the trooper first comes out, that would actually push it back. So all you have to do is add up the, if you want it to coincide, uh, to happen first, is add up all the uh, timing below it. So this takes 0.5, and this takes point, uh, 3 and 2 takes 0.5 seconds. Plus I added a um, 0.5 uh, delay on the uh, trooper text. So it's, so it's 0 0.5 plus 0.5. So it's a, uh, if I put a negative 1 delay, hope this is not blowing your mind here uh, that should be uh, put this the uh, trooper guy to come in first before the text so if I preview the page you see and that's exactly what happens uh, these two come in first together and then the uh, trooper versus predator comes in so that's great um, yeah that, that's the end of the video thanks very much for uh, watching I appreciate it and please do subscribe, hit the notification, uh, like it, share it, and all that jazz. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.